Hello, hello, people. Hello, people. Hello, people. Hope everybody's doing all right. Today I'm talking to Mr. Richard Glass. Mr. Richard Glass is the proprietor of Glass Hair in Venice, California. I'm just waiting for him to join the room. And um, as a man of color, um, running a business in uh, the beauty world is, uh, is nothing to sneeze at. I just want to talk to him and learn some of his tricks and secrets. And he's an interesting person. He's hilarious. They have you cracking up. How's everybody doing? Everybody all right? Safe, sound, good health. If you're not, we can do a prayer circle. I'm all about the prayer. Let me see. I'm going to try to send him an invitation. Believe it or not, y'all, this is Mr. Glass's first time going uh, All right. Just joined the Oh, here we go. Hello. <laughs> I don't know why I was expecting difficulty. <laughs> I was trying not to be difficult. I was trying to be here. I was trying to be here. I was trying to be here. How, how are you? Brother, how are you? I'm very well. You? Thank you. Thank you for having me. This uh, it was a little crazy today, you know, doing clients. So uh, I really appreciate this. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. You know, you're like one of my favorite people. Uh, and I'm going to tell you why. So, so I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll start off from the beginning. Late one night, I was watching um, late night TV, and this is like probably pre the internet the way that it is now. It was around, but we weren't on it as much. Right. And remember the late night infomercials used to come on TV, and they would talk about like the Ginsu knife and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe some yeah. pot and pan. Okay, well, they were doing this hair care thing on one late at night, and they had a series of... Um, hair designers in the panel, you were one of them, but you were the only fudge in the whipped cream. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was only the only fly in the milk, as my grandma would say. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wow, this guy must really be doing something if he's in this company. I was like, wow, that's pretty decent. So I wrote your name down because we didn't have the Google then. I wrote your name down and I did my research later. And then fast forward, I was hosting an event and they asked me, um, do you know anyone that has any product that we could put out in our, um, our, um, grab bags? Yep, yep, yep. And I'm like, I don't know. I was like, Oh, I know somebody maybe I was like, let me make a call. Let me, let me call somebody. Yeah. And you and Faith Renee Evans yes. got together and gave me all of those samples of glass hair. The, what was it? The, the, um, glass hair. It was glass it was hair. Glass hair, air gel. It was the air gel. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, um, we were able to fill our gift bags, and I will always be indebted to you for oh, oh, doing that for well, me. That was my pleasure, and what it was, we're just trying to get a grassroots out on it. So we're, mm -hmm. we're just doing some more formulations. So we got some more things coming up for 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 the world, and I'm super excited about it. I'm super excited about it. But so yes, how, it was, how long it was have my you been pleasure, in business? brother. It was oh. absolutely my pleasure Thank you. to Thank make that happen. Thank you. How long have you been in business? Uh, wow. Uh, February 11th, I just celebrated 23 years. Wow. But and I've been doing so hair and makeup for, wow, since I was 13. So it's almost 40 years. Okay. Yeah. So you, did you start out like from your own home in the beginning? Of course. Uh, I have five sisters. So that's what it was. <laughs> it was yeah. a fight to get into the restroom kind of thing. So, um, yeah. So... My sisters were in the restroom. I had to get them out. So I had to do their hair or learn how to do their hair to get them out. And then when I would finish one, another would sneak in. And then I was like, okay, so I got to get you together too. Oh man, oh man. So fast forward, the girls going to school and their friends seeing it. And they're like, your brother did that? Oh, can he do mine? Sure. So in wow. my backpack, I had my Kazuri flat irons and comb and my stove along with my books. And, uh, and I was going to different girls' houses after school. 
uh, it was it it was my hustle. It it was my passion, but it was my hustle though. I was like, oh wait a minute, I I got my own right, <laughs> my own allowance. right. And it, it's funny how things like that happen. And I'm, I'm I, I guess I'm speaking to you like this because I'm trying to spark a fire up under the youth of today to oh. be more creative that way. And everybody's trying to get the quick fix and run into the TikTok and want to be these internet sensations. Yeah when that is a hustle and you can make money off of that but the likelihood of everybody being able to do that is slim to none it's, it's slim and almost none um yeah. the, there, there's a there's a phrase that jennifer lewis says and i love it it is uh there is no elevator to success you have to take the stairs very, ain't, ain't, very ain't true that it? ain't that it right there like it's, very true very true meaning, you gotta pay your dues. You gotta put in. You you gotta love what you do. You gotta be you gotta be earnest, you know, about yeah. what it is that you want to bring forth. Whatever yeah. your gift is, make sure that you know your gift left and right, so that way you can uh, I won't say break the rules, but you can remake the rules. So because you know the product, or you know that right. you, you you know what it is that you're whatever you're selling, basically. Absolutely. Absolutely. So in those years when you were hustling in, with your backpack, hopping around to these, these ladies' yeah. homes, did you ever take the time to actually work for a salon and work under someone else's tutelage? Actually, I did. I did. Um, but it wasn't until after I finished school. Mm -hmm. So all through school, I, I was on my hustle. It, it was just me. It was, um, yeah, it was just the girls. But then my, my, my kind of shining star was i want to say mid school though because the the uh, jewish girls they saw that the black girls had their hair blown out and flat iron because you know th this was the mid 80s you know so they were mm. like who did that richard did that oh okay can you do mine yeah uh, my kazuri irons was flattening uh, those jewish curls <laughs> before the bat mitzvahs and the bar mitzvahs uh, you know oh yeah uh -huh. so yeah so they told two friends they told two friends uh and then from there high school finished and i worked to work for um my friend alex alex was an awesome hairstylist and i came in under him to do shampoos because he had a uh broken collarbone mm -hmm. uh, from an event that I took him to. So I kind of felt bad. I was like, oh, man, I done, I done jacked up your money, man. I done messed up the That must have been a serious party, breaking collarbone. <laughs> well, That's serious. It, it was It was an event where um, it was a, uh, you, you had a tray of, of glasses, and you had to go to the other side without dropping the water mm -hmm. to, like, you know, mm -hmm. and he having too much fun on this grassy knoll uh he hit it and <laughs> slipped and fell like again I, I felt bad so i um I, I took upon him uh to to help him out so in that mm -hmm. i became his shampoo boy <laughs> okay and, and again and in, from there in the, hair, hair, in the hair care world that's basically starting entry level that is so even right though you knew what you knew how to do oh yeah you still I mean, started on an entry level right. yeah and, and but from there i went to school i went to cosmetology school from there, so uh, nice. which was very needed because you have to have a license because you can't you can't you can't do it without. I mean, you can. There are plenty of people doing it. Kitchen beauticians, they're they're out there, and I I don't see some work because they're a little bit more creative and a little bit more. I would say more innovative, but they 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 take things extra because sometimes the supplies are limited. So they'll make do and make shit happen, which yeah. is you know. Amazing. <laughs> it's glass plastic. <laughs> but yes, I, I worked so, at a hair salon uh, and also going to school. So I finished schooling and then took whatever I learned from school and brought it back to the salon. Which was okay. Yeah. And at, at what point did you decide I can do this all by myself? Ooh. Uh, maybe about eight years later, after I finished school, because I was at that salon, uh, and my my time there had ran its course, uh, mm -hmm. and then I moved to another salon. 
Perfect. I did that. And again, it ran its course. I was working with some celebrities, not nothing really huge, you know, but uh, Venice is and was a kind of a tight knit family. So I've, I've never posted, a, you know, like a, a crazy advert or anything as such, but it was always word of mouth. And my thing was, mm -hmm. if you tell three, you get a free. So if you refer three of your friends, mm -hmm. I'll do your hair for free. I mean, and it worked. I like it. My girls were hustling for me. I was like, girl, look, look, check, check this out, Rebecca. Girl, guess what? You send three of your girlfriends in, you'll get free hair, haircut, color, whatever you want. Really? Uh huh. Yeah. So you send three, you get a free. Very smart. Very I, smart. I try. Who, who was your first celebrity client? Wow, my first celebrity client, who is still a client, uh, is Lori Petty. Oh, Lori. Hey, Lori. Lori, Lori, <laughs> Lori. Uh, she was and still is an amazing friend, client, and we get to have fun and uh, create looks for the uh, red carpet uh, and yeah. different shows. I was doing her hair color for Orange is the New Black. So uh, Her hair is always sharp. It's always sharp. Well, thank you. Thank you. We, we keep yeah. a, I call it a disheveled pixie because it's super choppy, uh, and and we've just been playing with colors now, you know. So we, we're we're on this pink phase now, which is and I'm sure fun. you could probably get a lot of get a, away with a lot with her because she has that that wildness, that that unbridled fun that in edge. her edge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's it's super fun. It's super fun. It's super fun. So, in in running your business, it, it, was there any time? that you were faced with having to defend your blackness? Ooh. Well, I want to say every day, because every day I, I'm a black man. I can't be anything else. Uh, so yes, uh, there have been times when I, I had to make sure that I, I yeah, that I defended myself. But, I want to say early on, I, when I was having this conversation with a different friend, um, I developed a British accent when I would go to parties because I was just this big chocolate dude, and the big chocolate dude was a little intimidating. But uh. if I had a British accent and just spoke, then guess what? It was, it was like everyone wow. was talking to me and actually was very accommodating. And it it was great, you know. So it it was less wow. off putting, you know. To to that's to, like kaiju level code switching. That's <laughs> super hydro code switching. <laughs> like only because I, like I said, I read the room and I just saw what it was, and what it was mm. was just a bunch of individuals who had not been uh, educated in. That, right. that other individuals on this blue marble that we call planet Earth. And, right. Uh, right. Yeah. So yeah. So. <laughs> so what's the key to your longevity? You've you've been in in your business for quite some time. You're pretty successful. Give us some some keys that uh, uh, gems that we can run away with. Uh, um, be the person that you would want to go to. Mm. Make sure that you're on time. Make sure, mm. sure that you have your supplies. Make sure that you're earnest and honest about the style that you're going to give. And yeah. read the client because the client is going to make sure that, well, hopefully that you guys can convey that um, they, they know what they want. So, and by knowing by them knowing what they want for you is to make sure that in your consultation that you make it happen, you bring forth. So whether you right. need braids, color, cut, highlights, what, whatever it is, that you bring forth the look, you bring forth your skills and your, and your integrity because that's what it's all about. It really is. You know, cause I, I've heard horror stories, I'm still hearing horror stories about um, stylists making clients 
shampoo their own hair before they come in. Like things that should not be, but happens. And again, I'm not in those predicaments, so I'm not sure why that stylist is asking that person to shampoo or blow dry their own hair. But yet still, that's one of the things that that people want when they go to the to the salon, you know. Pamper I mean, me. You know? If I'm paying my money, I want to be pampered. <laughs> Please pamper me. Huggies, loves. Well, I don't care. Depends. I guess it depends now because I'm older. But, <laughs> but yes, pamper me. Pamper me, you know. Make, make sure that uh, I know that you respect my money that I'm bringing to you because, mm. again, I, I don't. I, I don't. I don't get the. I, I don't get the, the, the not pampering the client, again because it's it's them who who are making you. Yeah, at least I've even seen some businesses rationale. where they say it again. I said at least that's my, my rationale. You okay. Know, like, you know, it's, yeah. If if not, I mean I've seen or if not some you, I, I wouldn't be. Right. 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 I've seen some facilities actually word in their bylaws to force the clientele to let themselves get pampered. So they basically strip you of your rights so you have no recourse but to just be there. Why does someone have to tell you to relax? Yeah. Well, but again, then again, they're on this big, huge, huge blue marble that we live on. There are so many different people. So you want to try to find your tribe, whether it be, whether it be work, whether it be family, extended family, uh, uh, careers, schooling, you always want to try to find your tribe. And in that, True. you know, um, again, without dialogue, you have nothing. So uh, start bumping your gums, as my granny would say, bump your gums and find, find out somebody who likes you or who is like you and then right. you can make it happen. You know? right. Yes. What has been your greatest challenge? Wow, my my greatest challenge, I would, would say incorporating braiding in back into my regime because fat fingers are not nimble enough <laughs> to okay. braid. But I make it happen. But um, okay. just like box braids or something like, yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm not. Doing this. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Like, I, girl, I know four girls who can make it happen, but I, I'm... That dexterity is not yeah. there. It can be, but again, that that's just a challenge. My sister sometimes does braiding on the side, and she, that's what she complains about now. She's like, I don't want to do that. My fingers. Yeah. My fingers. Like, like I, I don't got time for all that. No, no, thank you. Now, a blowout round brush? Yeah, sure. I can do some nimble stuff. Flat iron? Sure, great. Cut? Great, great. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm utilizing it. But this... This is crazy carpal tunnel right here. This <laughs> product, uh, 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 product, uh, 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 uh. and then some. Are you are you over braided? Tell, are you under tell me what your tell me what your work environment is like because you you seem to be a jovial, fun person. So what's your what's your work well, environment like? I have a boutique salon, uh, so it's just me in here. So I get to have the run of the place, you know. Um, uh, Crazy hair, crazy makeup. I mean, uh, I was doing makeup earlier today uh, and hair for a client's 50th birthday that her mother is throwing for her. So had to get her ready for that. Um, but yeah, um, I, I'm happy to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be here, you know, to have a, a vessel yeah. to create beauty, to create, you know, different avenues, you know. Um, like the, the hair care line, that's one thing that we're doing. We're retooling some things. So um, we got some new stuff coming out in 2025. Uh, we also have a wig line getting ready to launch. Um, I say we, it's me. <laughs> but um, but yeah, uh, I, I'm excited. Uh, but the we would be the investor. So yeah, it's me. Okay. It's me. It's me. Okay. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that, I missed the air gel. That, I used to use that to twist my locks. It was perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Well, again, we're retooling, making it greener uh, uh, to um, make sure that we are leaving a wonderful uh, print 
on the planet. So got you. Uh, got you. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So who are you? Tell me your inspirations. Wow. My, some of my inspirations, I I would say our, our well, it was my grandma. She was she was everything. She uh, she was my mother, my father, uh, and my grandma. You know, uh, my my hero. You know, um, we lost her some years ago, uh, but whenever I'm, I'm in doubt or I, I I'm in question. Uh, I always hear her, and she tells me, 